And one of the first things you need to understand is how PowerShell handles security as it relates to scripting. Now what you have to understand is that the security features that we have in PowerShell are focused on the unintended or accidental script execution. If you have been around for a while, remember back in the days of the VB script macro attacks that we all had to endure, people would get malicious VB script files in their email, they would double click them and bad things would happen because they would launch and run automatically, unattended or accidentally. PowerShell does not want that to happen. So we're focusing on unintended or accidental script execution. This has nothing to do with preventing bad commands from being entered interactively. If someone has access to a PowerShell console and if they have the privileges, PowerShell will do whatever it is that they attempt to type. All the script does is it makes that automatic and we want to avoid that. So PowerShell security settings really are like covers on a launch switch. You have to flip up the switch. I'm going to show you some of the settings that you have to flip up in order to launch a PowerShell script. So PowerShell scripting security really kind of falls into a number of areas. There is something called a script execution policy. This is a setting that controls whether you can even run a script or what types of scripts you can run. And we're going to look at all of these in a little more detail. There is a default file association for the PowerShell script. PowerShell scripts can be digitally signed. And in order to run a script, you have to use the full path to the PowerShell script. And of course, users must have the appropriate permissions, privileges, tools, and access, whatever it is that you are expecting them to do within the script. So let's first look at the execution policy. The execution policy by default on a brand new installation of PowerShell is to not allow any scripts to be run. You can type all the commands that you want. You can open up a script file, copy and paste the results into a PowerShell session. That will still work, but you by default cannot execute a PowerShell script that is controlled by this execution policy. Now in PowerShell version 3 we can set that execution policy by scope such as the current user or the local machine. There's a commandlet we're going to work with called get execution policy which will display the current policy and as you might imagine set execution policy will allow us to configure it. Now you'd have to do this on a per machine basis if you want to be able to run scripts on that machine. The alternative would be to use group policy because then you can push out the settings that you want to your clients or servers. Be aware that the execution policy that we're going to look at here, this is not a security boundary. Remember, this is just like the cover on a switch. It's just another layer of security, if you will, kind of a pseudo security. So I don't have scripts run without my intention. I have to explicitly tell PowerShell I know what I'm doing and I want to run this script. So the execution policy, and there's a, an about topic you should take a look at, basically fall into these categories. There is restricted, which is the default, which says I will not run any PowerShell scripts whatsoever. There is all signed, which says only run scripts that have been digitally signed. We'll cover digital signatures in just a moment. Remote signed says I will run any script that was created locally without any extra bells or whistles, but anything that was downloaded through the internet, such as via Outlook or Firefox or Internet Explorer or even I believe Chrome, Windows will detect that that came from the internet and it flips a bit in the header and it will block that script from running unless it has a valid digital signature. That should be the minimum setting that you specify, in my opinion. There is unrestricted, which says run anything. I'm not going to check. I'll just run any script that you give me. And then lastly, there is bypass, which ignores the script execution policy. The assumption is if you are in a situation where you're using the bypass execution policy, you have taken additional steps on your own to verify that the scripts are secure and what you intend to run. All right, so that's the execution policy.